Lisa, pouvez-vous nous donner des informations sur Black and White Nous dire comment vous avez conçu cette immense toile et comment vous l'avez réalisée I began the painting in 2005 and it was a, a period in my life when I, I felt um, a, a compelling need, a big need to, um, to take stock of where I was as a painter, as an artist. And this also corresponded with an irritation that I began to have on another level with something about the relation to um, repetition in my work. And so by the time 2005 came, I thought, why do I always have to uh, paint things in series? Or why do I always have to, what is it about repetition? And I became very interested in making a painting that was a singular painting where it just could not be repeated. I could not make another kind of series with it. And so I thought, well, how am I going to do that? And I thought, well, if I made a painting that was just so big, so enormous, I absolutely wouldn't have it in me to make another painting like it. And so, um, and so I embarked on black and white. And when I was doing the, the drawings of it, I thought, well, it would have to be, the painting would have to be, from a practical point of view, um, worked on panels. And they would have to be kind of joined together. So just to sum up uh, from that point of view, the painting came out from two impulses. One, the need to kind of make a manifesto, if you like, to show what I really thought about painting. So I think in French, do you have the word tableau manifest? I think I, I felt, even at a very early stage, that the painting would be would, would be sort of um, composed around a kind of duality and it would be this, this kind of dance between thinking, feeling, experience um, and then materiality, touch, making. I guess in this, in this kind of duality it, it also touched on something that, is, um, that lies within the term still life. And so there was something in the duality of the black and the white that chimed with still and life and with painting as contemplation and painting as a verb. So all these things were stirring in my mind and in terms of how I developed the motifs I began to think about um, paintings I'd made in the past and certain object motifs entered into um, this dark part of the painting, um, objects that I'd painted with um, since the 80s, such as shoes or light bulbs. Um, there were objects that were, um, that also keyed something about time and motion, things that were obviously still in themselves, but that once you picked them up and used them, you were moving through time, such as ice skates or dancing shoes or a guitar. There was imagery of rope and thread and ribbon. Um, these objects are all coiled up, but when they stretch out, they become a very different order. So there was something also about transformation. Vous avez parlé de deux parties. Euh, Est-ce que vous pouvez euh, dire comment ce, ce moment d'articulation se fait Qu'est-ce qui s'est passé pour euh, euh, décider de la relation de ces deux parties I made a, a, a sort of a shift here, um, moving from the darkness to the light, as if the eyes are kind of opening. And um, in this side of the, the painting, there are many objects um, and, and devices that are to do with uh, picturing. And the mirror seemed to be a good object to use as a way to speak to um, the devices of picturing, as a way of carrying forward the transition between the, the darkened side of, of the contemplation to the side of the action and the studio, the studio setting itself. When I first moved to London all those years ago, I don't know if you visited London, but if you've taken the metro, the tube in London, you see everywhere written along the platform edge, mind the gap. Another really interesting challenge was um, painting that band of white right here. Um, because um, because I, feel, I felt that when I was doing this, um, it was really very abstract. It didn't really correspond to um, objects in the way that everywhere else in the painting there are objects. And so there was something again about um, 
about the play between the real. The band of white was like a threshold of just the materiality of the paint. Of course, it's been crafted into a band and it's been modulated so that on one side it's a bit more diffuse and on the other side a little bit heavier. So it definitely is kind of tipping towards an image, but nonetheless it seems to me in my mind to act just as something which is the paint itself. And so f moving from the paint itself, we also then move into the zone of the, the, the studio. Also, I prime the canvas white to begin with. So I start off with a gessoed ground, which is white. And it's also speaking to the white of the gesso before it gets acted on with the, the paint itself.